Hello, 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 everyone. How are you? Hope you're having an incredible, incredible day and may peace be upon you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Yes, I can. The Seekers to Life, Business and Career Success with me, your host, Dr. Izdihar Jamil. And today I have the gorgeous, the fabulous, inspirational <laughs> Barbara Norman, who's a certified financial planner and she also has a non-profit education foundation that helps with Women Financial Academy. And Barbara and I met in Van, I think about a few weeks ago, two, three weeks ago. And I was just hooked to her when I did my, <laughs> um, when I did my sentence on the stage, Barbara was the one that I looked at to hold me and to ground me. So Barbara, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. And Barbara is at her daughter's place. She's uh, going to be expecting her grandchild, her granddaughter, really, really soon. So Barbara, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. So Barbara is going to be sharing. As a certified financial planner, Barbara has met lots of people from different ages of life, from the beginning of the career, in the middle, in retirement. So she has this um, idea about sharing and how we can have our goals. Um, like one goal doesn't have to cancel the other. And she's going to show it to us that you don't actually need to have a lot of money, but you got to be creative in creating what you want. So Barbara, um, thank you so much. First of all, thank I wanted you. to know, how did you become a financial planner? Wow, um, that's a crazy story. So I grew up with taxes. My dad was an enrolled agent, my brother was a CPA, and I loved money, but I didn't want to sit and do taxes. And so Ooh. financial planning was just a natural for me. I got to be with people, I got to be with their stories, with their life goals, their challenges, and um, still kind of be doing tax and money. And I, I just love it, just love it. Thank you. And Barbara is that, uh, that type of person that loves people. She, that's why she's in here, like kind of helping people because one of her thing is that nobody's going to be a profit center, isn't it, Barbara? That, that's, you, that something that's that exactly you came up right. with, nobody's going to be anybody's profit center. So talk, talk us through about how did that happen, kind of your journey to leading to that point? Because a lot of the times people just see dollar signs. You know, you're just a number. You're just mm -hmm. a dollar sign. The next dollar sign, the next number, the next number. Forgetting that you're a mom, you're a sister, you're someone's daughter, and then just the dollar sign. Ding, 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 ding. So mm -hmm. tell us about that. Right. And in my industry, so I'm a certified financial planner. In my industry, it drives me nuts because um, when I go to industry meetings, I, I, it makes my skin crawl. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I hear about these advisors and they talk about the amount of money they're making and how they're doing it. And I mean, some of these things, it just, it's awful. But I think I kind of came to my frustration with my industry. It lacks transparency. It's complex. People get into these in instruments that they can't get out of or that they spent a lot of money on or they're illiquid. Um, but I think my coming of age came when I really kind of started, we get educated coming into this by the companies who hire us and they're going to tell us their story. They're going to tell us what they want us to be telling. Um, but as I kind of started self-educating and stopped drinking the Kool-Aid, if you will, started learning more about internal fees. Um, and I went to a company and it's like, hey, you know, our stuff is really loaded with fees. I kind of want to sell this over there. And they said, no, you can't do that. This is your short list. You will sell these investments. And um, it really turned a light on for me that, you know what, we're not necessarily serving our clients' best interest when mm -hmm. we sell them all of these fee loaded stuff. Um, and I got so frustrated with it, Izzy. I was with a company long enough to get a pension. And mm -hmm. had I stayed 16 more months, they would have doubled the pension. And I, I quit. I, when mm -hmm. I realized how important this was and what it meant to people, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget the guy on the phone. He says, wait, nobody does this. He goes, what are you doing? And I said, not one more day. I can't do this. It's preventing me from going forward. And so I got really passionate about it and I built out the Women's Financial Academy because I wanted people to understand what is a stock, what is a bond, what is a mutual fund, what is an ETF, how do fees work, how do advisors get paid? Because if you don't understand those things, you are so vulnerable. Um, so I just wanted people to understand. Yeah. 
thank you so much because the mind boggles me with all the fees and then suddenly oh there's this thing there's this thing there's this thing and in a way you felt like cheated and yes. um thank you so much for like having the courage to do that because you could easily yes 16 more months or 14 more months. Yes, I'll just go there. So Barbara, tell us about um, the story of your daughter that you mentioned earlier to me that kind of like triggered things um, with having the goals because in my mind, it's like, okay, you want to have gold, this is it. And then that one first. And then if that happens, then it's this one. So how can we have, you know, we all have multiple financial goals. So how can we have it so that it doesn't have to come later or it doesn't have, you know, like 10 years time, I don't even know if I'm going to be alive in 10 years time. Right. So how can we kind of like create that um, goals and be happy with it and, um, and make do with what we have versus trying to add more and more and more. And more, right? Oh, so I'd love to share two really fun stories, and it boils down to having fun, living your values, and being creative. So I think the story that you're referring to, um, when I got divorced, if I had followed my financial plan, I would have been the most miserable, unhappy person in the universe, and my <laughs> daughter would not be where she is today. So don't, I'm not saying don't have a financial plan. What I'm saying is right. we all have to get creative. And so what my financial plan said was you can't live in that neighborhood and you can't send your kid to that school and still retire. In fact, it said you just can't live in the neighborhood. Mm. And so I said, mm -mm, I'm getting creative. So I got on Craigslist. I found another single mom. We rubbed our two nickels together and we rented this beautiful 3,400 square foot house in the neighborhood that we wanted to live in. And the crazy thing, Izzy, is that um, we paid less in rent than we would have in a much lesser neighborhood. And I mean, the bonus in all of this, we'd get in the living room or we'd get in the kitchen together and we'd start yeah. drinking wine and we'd cook and we'd laugh <laughs> and we'd sort out life. And we had each other's backs. It's like, if you had a night commitment for work, no problem. I got your back. Mm. Weekend thing, you go. We had each other and it was just beautiful. But when you live in a neighborhood like that, Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Some of these kids had um, monthly allowances. You could feed a small African tribe for a year with. It was just <laughs> crazy the money these kids have. And I dropped my daughter off at school and most of the cars in the student parking lot were better than mine. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I could deal with that stuff, but my daughter had to live with it and you get mm -hmm. judged by it. And mm -hmm. You know, here come the birthday parties, and literally, we got this one invitation. I swear it came in a gold foil envelope, and it said, you know, dress up in your best outfit. Be here at this time. The limousine's going to pick us up. We're going to go build a bear, and we're going to put a heart in our bear, and then we're going to go get our nails done, and then we're going to the club, and we're going to have a tea with our bears, and then the limousine's going to drop you off at home. Oh my what God, is that a birthday party? <laughs> a birthday party. I mean, and when it came time for Mackenzie's birthday, like I'm giving her my best ideas with what I could afford. And she was, you know, the eye roll, the, oh my God, mom, don't embarrass me, mom. Nobody's going to show up for a pizza party and a jumpy. And she said something really sad to me. She goes, I don't have to have a birthday party. And I was like, and it broke my heart. Mm. And I was talking to my older daughter and she goes, mom, why don't you have a Jell-O award? It's like, a jell -O war? Of course. So my invitations were like this Word document, like show up, wear clothes that you're going to throw away, have a one gallon bag of Jell-O. And um, <laughs> I got the jumpy, I got the pizzas, I ordered five cases of whipped cream from Costco, and I got these two horse tubs. My neighbor and I made 67 boxes of Jell-O, and those kids went at it. They had so much fun. The first year, there was 76 kids. The second year, there was over 125. By the third year, I couldn't count, but I think we had close to 200 kids at this birthday party. I was literally sitting in a soccer field in Arizona, and this guy comes up to me, and he goes, my daughter knows somebody who went to your daughter's birthday party. And I was like, okay, that is epic. But the story that I, right? the story that I take away from this is it didn't, cost a lot of money. I did not sacrifice any of my financial goals to have mm. all of that fun and still live in the neighborhood. And so I think if we all get really creative, mm -hmm. one goal doesn't have to cancel out the other goal. And you 
we will live much more richly mm. if we just get creative. Absolutely. Um, and I kind of love it because like in one sense, you know, okay, this is what you, a birthday party for a girl, for anybody, it's a big deal, right? Especially at a, at a child's age, um, even to our age now, you know, birthday party is still a big deal. Um, but I love how you kind of like, okay, this is what we can, it's a matter of thinking differently or like mm -hmm. you said, creatively, or if I do this, what, what is going to have fun? Your value is first and foremost, I think it's fun. It's kind of like your thing to have fun. Um, but also I wanted to touch this a little bit. How did you overcome that social expectation? You know, because you said like a gold platter, a limousine and everything. Like how did you, I feel that it takes a lot of guts to overcome that social expectation more than anything to do something different. Because nobody does a jello party. Like, nobody does a jello party. <laughs> they're messy, by the way. <laughs> they're messy. And then like, but, but it's just so different that people are just like, oh my God, I just got to go and check it out. So how did you kind of overcome that social expectation and have the faith or have the guts in yourself? Um, it, at one point you mentioned your daughter's going to nobody's going to come, mom, you know, kind of that. So how did you whether it's a mindset thing or what to say to yourself or your kids that, you know, no matter what, it's okay. You know what? I go back to that thing and we've all heard it on our deathbed. What are we remembered for? Mm. And you know what? People remember who you are. They remember the experiences you brought to the table. Um, I don't, I haven't been to a funeral yet where somebody honored somebody's cars or house or wealth. I've been every single memorial service I go to is about who that person is. And so overcoming that, I think that we need to just let the stuff go and get into the experience. We want experiences more than anything. We want to be seen more than anything. Mm -hmm. And um, you know what? Be a kid. Have fun. Absolutely. Be a kid. Have fun. And I think like that's all underneath everything. That's all that we want is into the connection the yes. intimacy the um uh, not approval but it's just the warmth that you've been seen for you and the fun mm -hmm. part I, I have um i remember when i was in england and i went to an event um and you know there was a lot of gathering lots of people and then there's one lady i'm kind of roaming around checking the food i'm like hey is that the university is that hey what do you do um you know she does a phd and what is it about it's about how food ties people together. So she started yes. doing her research and it really is, isn't it, Baba? When you have pizza or food, that's the common language of people that brings <laughs> people um, together. So that is so cool. I love like what you share yeah. with, well, with your children. And you touch on an important thing. And for me, building traditions mm -hmm. is so huge. I was, oh, I always have been a big fan of building traditions like growing up Sunday dinners were a big deal four o'clock mm -hmm. you have yourself home no excuses we're going to be a family and I'm going to put a fabulous meal on the table and they came to expect it the other thing that I did with my kids and this is oh, I love this story because mm -hmm. it, it's applying to my granddaughter who's not even born yet um, soon in a few days she'll be here more days yeah. but who's counting six who's counting <laughs> <laughs> um so growing up for my kids on Friday night, we would do floor parties and I would take them to 7-Eleven and they could get five off the bottom, which was five pieces of candy for five cents. And I'd take them home and we'd make popcorn and we'd throw pillows and blankets all over the floor and we'd have floor parties. I never realized how important that was, but one day my daughter mm -hmm. called me from college and it was a Friday night. And she says, hey mom, and it's like, are you calling me on a Friday night? Yeah. And I hear a bunch of her girlfriends in the background, mom and arm. And I almost <laughs> cried. I said, what are you guys doing? She goes, mom, we're having a floor party. And um, a couple of months ago, I was on the phone with my daughter who's pregnant. And she says, mom, I can't wait to have floor parties with you and Piper. That's going to be her daughter's name. And I thought, oh my gosh, how cool is that? It's like, do you know how meaningful that is? I mean, what that means is like, for 25 cents a week, I just guarantee that two generations of women and their friends aren't going to be hanging out with somebody's dusty son at a frat party on a Friday night, right? Mm -hmm. Those traditions are so important. They mean so much and we've got to build those. And you know what? 
it doesn't cost a lot of money to do. We don't have to be throwing the credit card down on a Friday night to go out to dinner because we're too tired and burned out to know what we're gonna do. So for very little money, build lots of values in your life. That yeah. is absolutely incredible. I love it how you kind of like, um, you know, that little thing, isn't it? Uh, the, the word that, that we use is baraka, which is the blessing. And then from 25 cents, the blessing comes in the tradition, the blessings come in the connection, the blessing come in family and in connection. And yes. then like started with you and then with your daughter. What's her name, your daughter? I know Piper Mackenzie. is going to be Mackenzie. So Mac you and then Mackenzie and then Piper um, coming to it. What an amazing thing, isn't it? Like at that point, were you thinking about, oh, I got to set up tradition or were you thinking, right, this is, I want to create something special with my kids, um, something special with my kids, or this is what I have. What can I do to extend that value of that money? What I was thinking is I like popcorn and kids movies. <laughs> it just happened accidentally. <laughs> oh my God, it can't be any simpler than that, isn't it, right. Barbara? Because we think to overthink, oh, the tradition I'm creating for my generations, <laughs> or this, but actually I just love popcorn and candy. And you know, I think really we just need to show up and have fun. <laughs> consistently <laughs> oh my god and that is so cool and um, in a now is that uh, value or that energy that essence that you brought since they were so young is now coming in fruitfully um to, to now and what what amazing how does it feel like when uh, Mackenzie says that and then how does it feel within you did you like oh my god finally I did something right or god you know I'm a good mom. You know, sometimes we, you know, forgot to acknowledge ourselves too. Yeah, I think what comes to mind, and I, I have three children and none of them live in the same time zone, the little brats. Um, and I live in Southern California. My daughter lives in Lyme, New Hampshire. I don't think she could have moved any further. Um, but when she says things like that, it's that thing that makes me want to get on a plane and travel 14 hours <laughs> to get to this <laughs> location so that I can still have that with my daughter because it's just so special. Um, but yeah, those things are the things that always tug us to come back. And it's really important as kids grow up, get older, as we move away, um, mm -hmm. we got to keep, we got to keep family. We got to keep friendships. Absolutely. And um, is that your core value in your business too, Barbara? Let family, friendship, um, because, you know, if you, tr I feel that if you treat people that way, there's no way you can rip them off. Because, no you know, that's, that's a part of your sister or your cousin or your aunt, you know, someone's a relationship. So is that like kind of your core value in your business too? My, yes, my core value is it's family. It's getting the most we can out of life. It's, yes, not getting ripped off by my industry. And I see too much of it and it breaks my heart. Um, in fact, I don't know, if, Izzy, in my industry, mm -hmm. if, if you want to be a financial advisor, mm -hmm. you realize you only have to have a high school education and pass one test. That's it. That is the scariest mm -hmm. thing in the world to me. And I was reading in my financial planning magazine, you only um we have over 220 designations some of them mm -hmm. are a 35 dollars fee and no continuing education nothing i mean could you imagine Why? if the medical industry acted that way like don't just fall for someone who is a, you know charismatic beautiful talks a good talk really mm. do your education like that certified financial planner that seal that i have on my name you have to have a college education the CEs are rigorous. You are held to a higher standard than the rest of the industry. Like get to know who you're dealing with. And then the other thing too, like it, it's not just about money. And again, cradle mm -hmm. to grave, family, relationships, fun. Mm -hmm. I think about um, my girlfriend, Judy, who when they diagnosed her with breast cancer for the third time, and that was the final time you're done. And um, she wanted to die at home and she had to have 24 hour care. Now in California, that's 25 to $35 an hour, 24 yeah. seven. Um, so that's three people in your house a day. 
And these people have to have days off. So what is that? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 people coming from to and from your house every week. It's mm -hmm. upsetting. It's disruptive. It's not safe. So her daughter in New York rotated a calendar and the girlfriends all get together and she was never left alone. We cooked meals. We sat in her living room. We talked, we laughed, we cried, we relived old times. And Izzy, for those of us that were in that living room that Saturday afternoon when she passed away, we all took a glass of wine and we toasted her out the door. We toasted her beautiful life. And when you build your tribe, you're not lacking for anything in this world, nothing. Mm -hmm. we, and we have to get back to, it takes money. No, it takes friendships. It takes relationships. That's how we get through. Yeah, money is a tool. We all have to have it. We all have to have that financial plan. But you know what? It doesn't have to be the way it's being sold to us in the media or all over the place. We really need to get back to those core relationships. And that's what my business is about. Core relationships, values, having fun, family. It's just so heartwarming, Barbara, because, um, you know, for me, family is everything. I recently had uh, my grandmother, who's one of the people that I love the most in the world, passed away. And that's exactly that. She, at the end of her life, um, she was set ridden. And, you know, she had my mom, my uncle, my sister, my, you know, my cousin, like everybody coming um, together because it, it's the most fragile moment, isn't it? Like suddenly yeah. you lost your independent, like your friend. Suddenly she's like, uh, I'm assuming that was the third time was like the doctor was saying that that's kind of like it for her. And um, what a beautiful thing to have like set up. And that's what people are not getting, isn't it, Barbara? They feel that they have to buy people. Yep. They have to buy people or expensive things. But reality is that if you truly give yourself your heart who you are, um, people would just like do uh, anything, almost anything for you. Yep. They will. They'll bathe you. They'll change your diapers. People will do anything for you when you have those connections. Um, and we should be. I think one of my gifts coming out of COVID is we all got put into this lockdown and we all had our little bubbles of people that we felt were safe. And so mm -hmm. what I'm hoping is that we don't go back to normal. What I'm hoping is coming out of COVID that we continue to build these relationships and to rely on each other for family for fun for entertainment um yeah. yeah i think that's like the most beautiful thing and i feel that you know in family um don't count you know you know sometimes you count every little thing right i do this and you need to do this and you need to but you know the more that you let go of all that the more it's going to come back in multiple of ways that ways that you don't see like your friend um, suddenly she's got all these amazing girlfriends coming in over. I would guess, estimate with California 25 an hour, she probably would have spent at least 5K just on care alone, minimum, if she were to hire a caretaker. Um, but she, like you said, she'll be with strangers. You, God knows what's going to happen to her at night, right? Because, right? Um, and that's amazing. Thank you so much, Papa. What a heartwarming heartwarming story and i just love your values of family friendship work, warmth connection and have a little bit of fun you know popcorn and candy it can't right. get any easier than that so barbara just to wrap up what is one fun thing that people don't know about you oh um <laughs> I tried to do stand-up comedy. <laughs> when it was good, it was really good. When it was bad, it was horrible. <laughs> um, That's so cool. So stand-up comedy, so literally on a stage with you on a mic at a club. Yep. yep. And so oh. I still like to bring comedy in, but <laughs> it wasn't that my shiny is, moment. <laughs> that is so fun. That is so fun. And it takes a lot of guts to kind of like share something funny and then people either laugh or don't laugh, you wouldn't know, right? So it's just like, <laughs> that is so cool. And one final question, Barbara, what is your one word that kind of like speaks to your heart at the moment that you feel is going to, um, you know, shine the light for others? I only get one? 
<laughs> yes, one. You may rebound and do a little bit more. Wow. Um, okay, so I want to say joy, but joy and creativity. How about joyful creativity? Can I hyphenate my one word? Yeah. <laughs> joyful creativity. <laughs> you can. We create our own rules, right? Joy and creativity. And that's totally you. The joy, the creativity, the laughter, um, the family. So thank you so much, Barbara. And um, I'll put in um, the contact details for you. How can people get in touch with you, Barbara? You can find me at um, Sage Path Solutions. That's my company, Sage Path Solutions. And coming January, Women's Financial Academy, we're going to be putting all of our, um, all the lessons are going to be online, on demand. And so if you want to learn more, and I can't encourage you strongly enough, so you can find me at Women's Financial Academy or Sage Path Solutions. So sagepathsolution.com and womensfinancialacademy.com? Yes. Perfect. So I'll put in the show notes below. Thank you so much, Barbara, for hanging out with me. And I know I, I pray that everything goes so smoothly with um, your grandchild, that you will have your bundle of joy um, really, really soon in the next few days. And what an enlightening space that you have created. So thank you again so much, Barbara. Thank you. Have a good day. I love your show. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. So this is for me, your host, Dr. Izzy Hajami. Thank you for listening. Tell yourself, yes, I can. And so it is done. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. <laughs>